Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts every single day. Rudo, AJ, and Jesse coming at you. Ken will be joining us very shortly, but we are going to be talking about some of the news around the league first. Starting with, look, it's not an official deal yet, but allegedly Tyler Toffoli looks like he's going to be heading to Calgary. That uh, we're, we're still five and a half weeks out from the trade deadline and we're already knocking guys off of our wish list. So mm. it, it's beginning, I guess, is, is the conversation here. Yeah, what a big day. We have uh, the first big move of the deadline and it's bone surgery day and it's <laughs> Valentine's Day. So many bone things. surgery day, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's international LTIR day, apparently. That's what, I yeah. hear. That's what I've heard. Um. No, the Tyler Toffoli one is interesting. I don't know how much. Uh, I mean, are we wanting to dive into this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, we're starting with Toffoli. We're gonna we're gonna try okay. and save all the Vegas news for when Ken pops in. Yeah, it's 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 an interesting one, right? Because it's the first domino to fall. Uh, it's a guy that was on our list. Um, when you start trying to look at uh, how does this compare to, or you know, what does this do for Claude Giroux? Obviously, it's going to have an impact because that's one player that's now off the market. Uh, but definitely, it's not apples to apples here, right? Uh, Tyler Toffoli's got some term left on his deal. Um, this isn't a short-term or super short-term rental. Um, he's at a good, you know, a decent number. And then to your point, Rudo, we have to wait to see all, all the exact details. If there's salary retained, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yes, he fetches a first round pick. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if this changes too much in terms of what Claude Giroux costs. It's really, it's it's really so. The Giroux's the better player, I would say, the more versatile no player. There. Yeah. But part of the cost of acquiring Toffoli is the extra years on the deal, committing to him in the future. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, because he has signed. For the next couple of years and that's a team that has a lot of contracts that they have mm -hmm. to sort out in the next few years so <clears throat> it's <clears throat> geez rudo did you give me your cough or what <laughs> if i don't have it i'm here for it all right <laughs> um so I, th I, I think ultimately it's a pretty fair price calgary is probably gonna have a pick somewhere in the 20s um that's a pretty, they're a pretty good team. And he makes them better. He's a natural fit uh, with, with Sutter yep. from their time in LA together. And I just, you know, I don't think the price is all that. I, I don't really think the price is that big of a deal for a guy that slots into their top six, top nine, certainly their top nine somewhere. Um, and and just makes them that much better because they've had some they've had some issues with guys at the bottom of their lineup to nothing. Like nothing. Like they're getting carried by they they've been way too top heavy, is what I'm saying here. Yeah. That they've they've got guys at the bottom of their lineup that aren't giving them anything. And they don't take uh they don't really take anything off of their roster that they like Tyler Pitlick. Not a significant fine. impact player for yeah. sure for them. Like it's it's fine. So to fully, you know, for 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 Montreal's perspective, you're rebuilding, and now you add another first. Um, you now now you go all in on rooting for the Flames to do poorly. <clears throat> it, I, I think I saw it's top ten protected. Yeah. So you don't want them to, you know, they're they're going to make the postseason. Um, you want them to do too poorly, but just poorly enough. Yeah. <laughs> so you're fine you know you're you're they get they get another first round pick they get a prospect uh that they like i would imagine that that was why he was included i would assume so otherwise that's pretty random but uh yeah they also get a fifth for reasons uh yeah i mean just to Try and make it feel a little bit better, right? Sure, balancing it as much as, as Montreal can. <clears throat> but and that's you know, for, for Toffoli, like it's you know, Pitlick Pitlick helps balance the money a little bit. 
I don't think that that's an actual like Montreal was... important piece yeah, to Montreal I, or anything. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I, I do think it's funny that they just claimed Rem Pitlick off of waivers. Yep, and now they trade for Tyler. So the they Pitlick gotta, family big in Montreal. Got to collect them all. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So maybe that's fun. To, maybe not to be the best time to be a family in Montreal for the Canadians, mm-hmm. but yeah. So it's you know I, I I think this is a good price for a, like Tyler Toffoli. He's a good hockey player and yep. he produces. And there's a lot of familiarity between uh, Sutter and and Toffoli, and it's just fine. Yes, yeah. this, this is dope. Yeah, I, I think it does give the team a little bit more stability, as you were kind of talking about. With he's another guy that they don't have to worry about re-signing until twenty three, twenty four. It's really just of the important pieces. They really just have Gaudreau, Kachuk, and uh, Mangiapane to worry about. Oh, re-signing. Oh, that's it. I mean, I know those are big, big things, but <laughs> well, they've they've got to give Shillington a new contract too. And sure. he's had a he's had a pretty big but, breakout for them. But those the, Shillington, the, Kachuk, and Mangiapane are all RFAs. Yeah, and the the thing is, is that uh, Kachuk it's this last year of RFA, right? So like it's like a token RFA, where great you'll keep him, but you need to. And he's also you need to get give paid anyway. Yeah. yeah, you need to give him a real deal. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so, I mean, you're that's a lot of they're gonna have a lot of money. Those are all big raises. Manji Apani. I mean, I talked about trading. I, people gave me shit for me suggesting trading a first round pick last year for Manji Apani. <laughs> uh, and that guy, that guy is gonna you know he's gonna win the Cy Young this year, but he's also. Uh, he's going to get paid a pretty healthy, a healthy, pretty healthy raise. So they're they're in. I mean, the, the Flames are good. They're in good position. If their roster is going to get a lot more expensive, it's fine. Um, Toffoli just makes them better. Like it 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 helps them. It, he helps them. It doesn't doesn't take anything meaningful off their roster and upgrades. It's a good move for them. It's a good move for Montreal. I like it for both sides. They get another prospect that they like, who's probably ready to make the jump to North America at 20, and uh, they get another first-round pick. So we've established that the situation with the Toffoli trade is quite different than Giroux's, but does it still help set the market for someone like Claude, or do you think more dominoes need to fall there? Uh, I mean, there's push and pull. So we we say, hey, like here's your basic framework. Is the value of Giroux and Toffoli, all things considered, like, again, Giroux probably the better player, but a UFA and several years older. So all of that considered, I think this is probably your basic framework is a first, a prospect, and salary filler, you know, salary balancing contract going the other way. Yeah, I think for me, this just kind of reaffirmed what I've been kind of thinking the the, the price would be. <clears throat> Uh, cause yeah, the, the, there's just, I think this is a domino to fall. This is obviously the, the first domino to fall, but I, I do, Rudo, I think there needs to be a couple more, um, before you really start seeing anything kind of carve out as, Ooh, this is, you're going to have to pay more than this to get Drew. You're going to, you'll be able to pay less than that or whatever. There's just to fully make sense is the first one to go given he's got the term, um, and, and, you know, a lot of kind of what AJ just laid out, it made sense yeah. that he goes first. Um, Smart by Calgary too. I mean, yeah. look, yeah. we've, we've watched a lot of Cobra Kai the last few years. Strike first, dude. <laughs> you want to be the, the, the thing about the trade deadline is that the longer you sit around and wait for the, the market to develop, the, the more, more the players price go up. off the board. Yeah. Like I mean, the, you get uh, this year. And it's funny, Justin, I talked about this briefly on TDSP and not something we've talked about a lot. Uh, so far on our on this show, but the talent available at this year's deadline is pretty high right now at the forward position, especially on defense. It's pretty normal. Some some guys that you like and eh, a lot a lot of blah, but the forward position is offering up a, some really interesting talent this year. 
at the deadline as some guys that you think could make real differences, you know, not, not the, the, the Tomas Tatars and the Mikhail Bodkers of the world, right? Like you're talking some guys that could really do some, some damage in the, in a playoff run. And I'm, I'm, no offense to those guys, right? Like those are all good <laughs> players too. Tatar, Tatar is a guy that I think has a good chance to be somebody's deadline acquisition. Still like him, yeah, and would make sense for in a lot of ways. But it's it's really just this: the, the conversation is is there's high end talent available, and if you aren't going to be the one that goes out and get it, gets it, somebody else is. And the West just got that much tougher today. Now, there's a big gap between Colorado and everybody else out West right now. And that's fair to acknowledge, I think. But also, mm-hmm. you know, Vegas is kind of this, like, we'll, we'll get into it. Vegas Dude, I'm, 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 like, especially annoyed by this, the, the Vegas thing. Like, like it, it really does. It, it, this, one, this one rubs me. A much worse way than the Tampa one did because we'll it was get into very, it, but... very intentional, and it was not Tampa Bay. Yeah, the just Kucherov kind of thing kind of just worked out that way, exactly. Like it yeah. just sort of, it just sort of like fell into their lap where they were able to make right. the best of it. Not that undifferent from the Patrick Kane one a couple of years ago that Chicago kind and of tried to pull. Yeah. What What bothers me, and there's only the last thing I say, we can. It just it feels nasty because they made a move they so obviously couldn't afford, and we all saw this coming. The jokes yep. were being made all year of who's it going to be, who are they going to LTIR, and of course they do it in a way that it's one player, and now they get off with it scot free, and yep. everyone oh well they're just taking be mad at the rule. It's like okay sure, but the rule exists for situations as much as you don't like it. <laughs> Again, the Tampa one, you kind of backed into it. That is why the rule well, is like, there. The, the Not Kane, for you the to Kane go out situation and, and in Chicago overspend. was why it existed. Yeah. Like a guy that gets hurt during the season and then okay, so they they kind of they it was kind of they, they kind of fund it with like an extra two weeks yeah. at the end. You, you but you it extend was nowhere it instead near. of just literally making stuff up. Yeah. Right. Instead of instead of just being like, mm-hmm, well, we have to solve a problem. All right, well. You're you're putting the one guy who everyone said when when the extension was in place, ooh, that could cause some cap problems later. That guy just so happens to go on LTIR a week after he played in the All Star game. The back was yeah. fine then, and now like that's all of a sudden just, he has a right. degenerative back condition after he played in your All Star game. Right, right, which happened to be in your city, and and it's just like there's just so much about this one that just feels so extra it, weaselly. It it that, feels so skeezy. It does. It oh, feels, dude! It feels like it feels like a used car salesman just spent the last twenty minutes giving the whole pitch. Right. Right. Yep. And, and and oh, dude! It's just and, and and you said no, and then someone else walks in and gives that guy the sale. That's exactly how this one feels. Where it's just like, <laughs> oh god, the, 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 there's yeah. And then he winks at you as you walk out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And and. Yeah, they 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 made a move that everyone was like, you can't afford that at the time they made it, and just in time for him to be back, a, a player who, yeah, look, Stone yeah, might this, be this, this comment. This this comment is funny. Stone might be hurt, like he might be he might be struggling with a back injury, but yeah, until push it. came to shove, he was fine. He was yep. playing right. through it. He was good, and now all of a sudden they set up the pretense right right as Jack Eichel comes back, like. Let's let's not pretend that look might have been born at night, but it fucking wasn't last night. Right. All right. Like let's not pretend that this doesn't come across as all kinds of any anything but ugly. Well, and and, and all the people that are like, oh, well, every team should be taking advantage of it. And and, and you know, I, I know the sure. comment that if you're not cheating, you're not trying to know that in the chat. Like I know they're being tongue in cheek, but like that all of that is true. Everyone's trying to get a competitive edge, but it's like every team has players that you know are dealing with injuries have stuff that bothers them yeah. earlier this year kale mccarr his wrist was bothering him on and off if the abs went out and and traded you know a first round pick for claude Giroux, and then ltir kale mccarr's like oh well his wrist had been bothering him so that they could be nine million dollars over the cap vegas would be annoyed with the abs like it's just so obvious what you're doing 
this one just rubs me such the wrong way in a different way than, than Tampa's did last year. They went out and they intentionally overspent and knew all season we they, just they need someone to hurt down the enough. road. Right. And they were just like, we can wait for this. So. It, right. It, it, would it feel a lot better if Mark Stone went out long-term a month ago? Yeah. Like Instead Mark of Stone, literally as, four as days before by, I as, is coming back. Like, as is right. mentioned by our great pretender in, our, in the chat right now, but like Mark Stone's been battling this all year. But the fact that he was still playing through it and the fact that he was he played at the All-Star game, look, if you're if you're really hurt, if you're really hurt, don't play in the fucking All-Star game. Don't go through all of that. Like if you're really battling through this and you're in like there's your week off right there. Like right. there's a week off to try and feel better about it. You may and he makes the decision. It obviously wasn't bothering him badly enough to not participate in that. Right. Yep. If if he if it was honestly, had he not done the all-star game, if they had said Mark Stone has a degenerative back disease that's really been bothering him, he needs to take he's gonna take the week off, he's not gonna go, and then we're gonna reassess. And then had they come back, it still would have felt like Look, yeah, the way that's that this, awfully convenient. The, the way but, that this looks now is that what hurt his back was Jack Eichel's cap hit. Right, and right. Now that now that he's free of that, he can he can feel better, and the cap hit is on somebody else now. Well, yeah. it's it's an interesting conversation too because you know he has this back injury throughout the year, and then suddenly when he goes on to LTIR, instead of him fighting it, it's oh, we can already tell he's not going to be ready for in, the entirety of March. Right. And... Yeah, and it's it will take however long it takes, and it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, we understand. <laughs> just just say it. <laughs> and 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 then honestly, you know, Rue, had he gone on LTIR a month ago, six weeks ago, whatever. You sit there and you go, okay, cool. This is their punishment now. They have to get through this stretch without their big, without a number one, you know, right a first line star. Yeah, they replaced and, their top right wing with their top center. Right. <laughs> and so it's like, it, this one just bothers me because honestly, even like a luxury tax in this situation would make me feel better because at least then there's some type of repercussion. Yeah. No, that, they get that, to do this, all this intentionally. This totally cool. Yeah. And nasty, and then they get to come back in the playoffs and and be, uh, you know, whoever they are. And good for them. They exploited the rule. But honestly, this is one that had the Avs done that, sure, you benefit from it. It's nice, cool. We, we, we got the player. But, like, I think we would all still be sitting here being like, look, they know they're doing something greasy here, but. Yeah, greasy is a great word for it. <laughs> Oh, this one just this one just really bothers me because uh, this to me is Vegas saying we don't know if we have the roster to to bounce them again. So let's find our way to work around it. And well, I mean, they're just they're, know, they're trying gonna... to they're trying to maximize the roster without having to do something that they don't want to do. They don't want to give away mm -hmm. Riley Smith or Evgeny Dadanov for free. They don't want right. to. They don't want to just. You know, they gave Mark Andre Fleury away completely for free. They got nothing for that dude. Yeah, and then turned around and spent that money on Dadanov. Like they Which was a right. choice. Yeah, right. Like they they they're making choices, and they don't. It, this is them throwing down the gauntlet and saying we don't want to make it. We don't want to make this choice. Right. We're gonna make the choice well, in a in a terrible Pacific Division. We are gonna sit out. We're gonna have Mark Stone just not participate. We're going to make the playoffs. We don't care where it is. We're confident we're going to make the playoffs in a bad Pacific that we're, we've already led most of the year. Like, yeah, yeah they, they're they fine. They can, they replace Stone with Jack Eichel. They're fine. It's not, they, all they have to do is make the postseason and then they get to power up. Yeah. All right. Well. Let's pay some bills real quick here before Ken gets here. We are brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one rated sportsbook app out there. Be sure to get on it. Go over there. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account to get amazing odds boosts every single day. But Super Bowl is over now. Doesn't mean the deals still aren't coming in if you are making a new account. The DraftKings is an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Not just the NFL, the NBA too. So if you really want to get in on a good deal, 
New customers can bet $1 on any NBA team and win $150 in free bets. It's that simple. You go over there. You can also bet on the same game parlays. You can do all sorts of stuff with NBA, NHL, whatever you want to bet in payouts. So jump on it. Use the DNVR code. Get in on the $150 in free bets. Once you get that, you can bet on whatever you want. You just have to bet the one NBA game. The free bets go into whatever you want on DraftKings. It's super dope. Free money to play with over there is always a fun time. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DNBR. Bet just $1 on any NBA team to get $150 in free bets if they win. Again, use the DNBR promo code to get that opportunity. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. Minimum $5 deposit. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. And, of course, if you have a gambling problem, call one 800 5 4700 and then go check out Green Mountain Dental Group and get your teeth cleaned over there and when you get a cleaning x-ray and exam from them you get a free Sonicare toothbrush they're great at what they do they will really take care of you I know Jesse went a couple weeks ago and said he loved it so yep. good for everyone everyone who goes over there seems to love the dental work they get done so be sure to go they're check phenomenal. them out yeah it's, it's dope that we get sponsored by all these companies that are actually good at what they do yeah (laughs) makes my job really easy so (laughs) that's maybe you need some bone surgery on your teeth all right green mountain dental group has you covered maybe they can help out mark stone i don't know Uh, (laughs) yeah (laughs) anyway uh, second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Still waiting on Ken. It sounds like uh, Vegas' practice ran a little bit long this morning, so I'm sure he's uh, he's taking care of stuff on his end before he gets here. But uh, from our end, I, I did want to circle back around to the Calgary conversation. A little yeah, bit. sorry. I completely derailed us oh, there. Dude. Yeah, I do think it's remarkable, though, that – there's just nothing abs related right now. Yeah, there's like there's nothing just going on. Long, same old, same old. Like, <laughs> uh, also, the we had a comment that said, "I don't think Vegas is particularly concerned about Colorado." You're fucking lying to yourself. Yeah, they definitely are. I yeah, that that's literally Vegas and Colorado are the two teams in the West. <laughs> like that's yeah, and like Cal- I think Calgary made a good move towards and, being that third team today. And that's what I wanted to talk about. I this feels this trade deadline. You start to feel things like Columbus against Tampa a couple of years ago. You see a team that is wherever they are in the regular season, but they make some moves. Columbus was not the same team a couple of years ago when they went all in with Duchesne and Panarin and and the Zingle and all of those dudes. That was also like you look at the roster. Yeah, like, for an eighth seed, that right. team was. That should not have been an eighth-seeded team. That's what I'm saying is some of these teams get that much better at the trade deadline, and you don't want to get left behind on some of that arms race, certainly, whether you're Vegas, whether you're Colorado, whether you're anyone else in the in the West. you got to keep a little bit of track there so you don't get surprised by a team that's roster is a lot better than its position says it is. So... I'm, you know, you're not jumping over chairs to go get someone because Calgary made one move for Tyler Toffoli. Yeah, like you don't, you did not immediately pick up the phone and call Philly, Philly right? You're right. not calling Chuck Fletcher to be like, "What's that price on Claude today?" Yeah, you know, like you're you're still waiting this out. Like you still do need to see how some things unfold. the The threat, the threat, the concern with making the move now is, what if? You know, what if what if Kale McCarr were to go out and get hurt tomorrow? Right. And he's out for the year or whatever. Now you're down McCarr. You don't know what's up with Byram. And you spent all those assets at forward. You really could use a defenseman, right? Like so it it is smart that to, for other teams to wait this out. But I do think I do think that for Calgary, adding a depth forward, the a depth forward, like adding they got forward help today. Uh, and not at the expense of their roster was a good was good work, and yeah. does bolster their position to chase the Pacific Division's top seed. Yep, so. because the no matter what gymnastics Vegas does, they have to they have look everybody magically gets healthy. They have to move guys off the roster at the by the deadline, or they just have to just not play with Mark Stone the rest of the year. Like there's. 
There's right. a, there's some sort of ding somewhere. And now, you know, Robin, I know Robin Leonard didn't practice today. We're going to talk to, we're going to talk to Ken about all this whenever he gets here. So I don't want to keep like harping on Vegas yeah. for this reason. Uh, we'll have but someone like, who actually will yeah. tell us all about that. But I, I do think it's, it is an interesting like opening move to the, to the trade season. Yeah. It, I, it's the opening salvo, right? This is the, everyone get to the starting line because here we go. You, you make a, you make an interesting point about. So like, look, Calgary's one point back of Vegas with, I think three games in hand. Yep. Maybe four, three, three games in hand. Um, I don't want to undersell. We talked about it last week, how good Jack Eichel is like Jack Eichel is an elite, yep. elite Mark Stone too. top, top tier center. Well, but, but I, cause I want to talk about the Mark Stone thing. Cause this isn't, if they're actually going to commit to, to, to trying to pull one over on everyone, right. You're not playing without Mark Stone until the trade deadline. Like, no, you're Mark Stone's done for the year. And he's, yeah. he's a much different player than Jack Eichel, as, as good as Jack Eichel is. It, it's just, it is an interesting... <laughs> it's an interesting call to make, right? Because now you're going forward without Mark Stone. You've got Calgary, who just got better today, right on your heels. Um, it, it's, it's, just, it's just interesting that they they are potentially willing to um you know punt on home ice maybe not win the division um it, it's just it's it's really it's it's really weird um to see them commit to going to the rest through the rest of the season without Mark Stone given where they're at in the standings and stuff. Yeah, I mean they've they they committed to trading for Jack Eichel knowing that he wasn't, you know, they lost Alex Tuck off that roster. Now I know he was hurt at the start of the year. Um but like he's been back for been tearing it up in yeah, Buffalo for a while now. In Buffalo. So <clears throat> you're you're like they've they've lost talent from when we last saw them. Yeah. Um, they, and they're, they, you know, like Jack, Jack Eichel is not like this magical elixir that fixes all those problems. Right. He's not good enough to replace Alex Tuck and Mark Stone, Mark Stone all at once. Like <laughs> right. Jack, Jack Eichel's sick, but the, even at his, even at Jack Eichel's best, you're still talking about like an elite player, but you need right. those guys. You're going to need that help. Well, let's, let's bring in the expert. On the topic of exactly what Vegas may or may not need, Sin Bin Vegas himself, Ken Bolke, blinks in and he's back. He All is. right, we made it work. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, Hello. thank you for coming on. What's up, guys? How you doing? Being salty about LTIR yeah. cheating. Yeah, mostly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today's a good day for that, isn't it? <laughs> he just came out and said it. Hey, you know what everyone doesn't want to hear? We're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, my shirt. How how does Vegas feel about this? Is is the overall thing? I'll say thank you on his deal? behalf. Okay. Yeah, look, yeah. I'm gonna wear it again. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it again on the watch along so people can actually see it, and it's not like forty percent off the. I'm off good the with forty percent. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what was your question again? I forgot. Uh, I got distracted. Is, by your is the feeling shirt. around the Golden Knights like everyone knows what the score is and that? they're just cheating or is it like, no, this is fine. Um, I think there's some of both. I, I think, okay. I think everybody's kind of in the same boat when, when you see another team do it, you kind of think, well, that's a bunch of garbage. You know, they shouldn't be able to do that. And you got, you know, the cheering and the, the Kucherov off being himself and $18 million over the cap shirts. And, you know, we're all upset about that, but then your own team does it. And you're like, well, uh, I mean, they kind of did it in one, you know, so I think there's people going both ways. To me, it's kind of a crutch. I'm not a huge fan of it because I feel like I'd rather you go into the playoffs with like a real roster and do it the right way and say, look, we had Eichel and we had to move Smith and Brassois and we're still better than everybody else in the league. Like that's the way I would rather go about it. But I'm not sure what they're going to get out of Mark Stone. So I know we can go nuts about this and, and I have, but 
And Mark Stone seems to have some sort of serious back injury. The guy can't play two games in a row, and all of a sudden it's like, no, he'll be perfectly fine to play 30 straight games in May. It's like, come on, guys. So I, I do want to ask you about that, about Mark Stone in particular, because that was some of the conversation we were having right before you came on. Like, he looked perfectly healthy at uh, All-Star Weekend a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's just, I think that's the part that, at least for me, that just feels a little icky about this situation is, man, he was perfectly fine to put on the show in front of the home fans for All-Star. And now, 48 hours before Jack Eichel comes to return, he just can't play. He just can't yeah. do it. So what what is the real injury status with Mark Stone? Obviously, he's had the, the issues earlier this year. Yeah, so it goes back to, they are actually, today, McCrimmon's actually claiming it goes all the way back to last year's playoffs, which always bothers me because the season ends and we ask the player, did you have anything wrong with you? And then they vehemently deny it, even though they did. <laughs> Just tell us, like, it's fine. We, we're we actually trying to do you a favor there, bud. Like, you sucked in that entire series. <laughs> tell us you're hurt. Like, we're, we're trying to give you an excuse, whatever. So they claim that it, you know, was kind of battling through it in, in uh, preseason. He actually got smoked in the face with a puck in preseason, like the second yeah. preseason game. So I don't know. That probably doesn't help your back. I, I'm not sure. Never can't, had a back can't imagine problem. it feels good. Face. Part, I've never had that. But so then game two is where it really happened. He goes to take a shot and like there's really not a lot there that you can see kind of pulls up goes into the boards and then when he hits the boards it's it's almost like his back is just like having absolutely none of it and he can't even move he just glides yeah. to the bench they basically carry him down the tunnel two guys on each arms like it looked really really bad yeah from there you said that was game two that was game two they got destroyed yeah. against the uh kings in la i was actually there which <laughs> I don't know what to make of that, but uh, so, you know, it's always fun he, when you go to a to cover a road game and they get smoked, and you're like, they get, oh, not only did road. they get smoked, but Stone goes out for what we were like is probably multiple months. Patch already broke his foot in the game, and it was like six to nothing in the first couple of months. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, so happy I drove four hours there, there and back. Yeah, yeah. Did that one. <laughs> Good decision there, way to go. But so then he comes back in a month, which was way faster than what I think most people thought it was going to be, or myself mm -hmm. included. It was like, wow, this guy's back a lot, you know, quicker. And then to make matters even more amazing, he played here, he practiced like once or twice, and then he's in the game. We're like, whoa. Yeah. Normally you think, oh, you're out for a month, we probably get him a week. No, he goes right back in was kind of in and out. You know, he played like 20 games in a row, but there were no back-to-backs in there. They had the one back-to-back. -back, he didn't play it. And then, you know, things go kind of haywire over the last month where he's in, he's out, he has COVID, he's back in, he can't play. You know, he plays in the All-Star game. He's standing on the Bellagio shooting pucks, and then suddenly now he's yeah. gone for 24 days. I Icky's the right word. I think you're right. <laughs> like, and then there's also like a piece of me that makes it seem like, wait a minute. So you're telling me he got hurt in game two and then they traded for Jack Eichel. And then once Jack Eichel was healthy, now he needs to go out for 20 days or right. maybe 70 days. Like it just, the timeline is so shady, but like, yeah, it's in the rule book. Like it's in the rules. Yeah. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all on the up and up in terms of, it's allowed sort of <laughs> sort of i mean it's not if you're not hurt but i think he so, is. <laughs> well and, and that is the other thing too and i was talking to someone on twitter the other day that where, where you do, do that <laughs> yeah i was gonna say yeah that that was my first mistake <laughs> but <laughs> so true <laughs> It was it was the the guy I was actually talking about a little bit earlier who was saying he's like oh well if they were trying to get around it why would it be Mark Stone when he's their best player it's like well you have to have the that. league has protocols and well that yes the money but also players that go on LTIR have to be approved to be put on LTIR to get that cap relief um, who was it a couple of years ago that was trying to go on LTIR but they did the league did the physical and they were like no I can't remember who it was they they wouldn't let a team put put someone on LTIR but like. So he is hurt to some extent. It's not like they are just picking a uh, you know a name that just so happens to fill. But they, what are they, they would also have a really really big problem with the NHLPA if they were like you're not hurt. Right, right. And, and so like there there is legitimacy to this. But are the, you made a comment there that caught my ear? 
20 days, 70 days. Are they saying right now? It's it's playoffs, right? Let me let me let me break down what we just. <laughs> well, I literally just drove uh, from the practice facility where we had a surprise Kelly McCrimmon media appearance, which these are rare. I think this is the second one of the season. It's not common. How often does Sackick talk? About the so same. So yeah. funny, yeah. It's about the same, and we right. had one last week, trade, and trade people lost their mind. Yeah, you get the email, and you're like, "Oh boy, here <laughs> yeah, we yeah. go!" And like, also, <laughs> Leonard mispractice, so everyone gets all excited. Oh, they're trading the panda guy that we all hate. I think he's fine, but everybody hates him. But that's a different story. So yeah. he comes in, and the first thing he says, he's like, "I have two items of business," and I'm like, "All right." I'm imagining Mark Stone's one starts yeah. out basically saying we're putting Mark Stone on Stone on LTIR. And he goes on, he went through the whole timeline and, you know, basically covering his tracks in case something were to happen. Yeah. There was one comment that really jumped out to me. So he said, Mark didn't think he was going to make it through March. And McCrimmon said he didn't think he was going to make it through March. And I thought, well, May is going to be a lot harder than March. And I'm like, <laughs> What? And actually, <laughs> the NHL.com reporter who was there, good day for him to be in Vegas, yeah. he asks, well, you mentioned May. Like, do you hope he plays in May? <laughs> and he's like, well, I mean, I'm naturally an optimistic person, of course. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man. The only timeline that he really gave, he's like, well, it's 10 days and 24 games, or 10 day, 10. 10 games in 24 days, which for the Golden Knights is going to be the 10 games. It's like 28 mm -hmm. days from the day he missed retroactive. But yeah, yeah, it's like, does it make it past May 21st? Does it not? He multiple times mentioned May 20 or March 21st and mm -hmm. said, like, we may have to reassess at that point. We'll see what happens at that point. We got to make, you know, leave our options open. But I mean, and then you Winks look at and the salary cap that. and you go, he's not coming back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he comes back, they got to shed seven million because they can they can go down to a 20 man roster at that point for the last 20 games. They got to shed seven million. I mean, they got a backup goalie that can probably go that's two. And then you're looking at probably Smith or Dodonoff or somebody like that. And I don't think that's what you want to do. And then where is Stone at that point? But then there's also the argument. If you, is it what's worse, getting rid of seven million dollars and having Mark Stone and knowing he's healthy, or just rolling the dice on Game One of the playoffs when Mark Stone's at a back injury? Like it's tough, right? Yeah, yeah. As, as much it's as it's very as... tough, this position that they put themselves in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What What's the status on Robin Leonard? Upper body injury, missed practice today, unknown for Wednesday, which I would make the argument he's almost certainly not playing on Wednesday. They were off the last two days, and then they practiced in Banff. Is that how you say it? Yeah. yeah. Banff. Banff. National Banff. Park. I didn't yeah. think that was a word until it popped up on a press In the National Park. That's just letters in the wrong I, yeah. I shouldn't be complaining. My letters and my last name are all in the wrong order, but bam. <laughs> I had to like quadruple check that shit earlier. Yeah, today. it's really it's like, there's, there's too many There's too many vowels and then too many consonants, and they need to be intermingled, <laughs> but they're not. But so, yeah, I mean, so I don't think he's going to play. It's the third time he's missed time this season, which he was on this whole tirade before the season about how he never gets injured, and then now he's the third time this season, and we're half the season in, so – I don't know what's going on there, but I would say not playing soon, but it doesn't seem like it's anything bigger. Otherwise, that might have been uh, item number three on Kelly McCrimmon's clipboard, which he dropped. And then I, I was trying to, you know, <laughs> but I snap a pic of it or something. Yeah, I was just taking, you know, just real quick. <laughs> not that good of a reader. They showed Sean McVay's thing on the Super Bowl cast the other night, something like that. <laughs> yeah, but his, I mean, his is like, all over the place. yeah his, his secret is you can't read his handwriting so it's yeah, fine. Wow. Fair. uh wait what was his second item of business stone was one what was the, the second michael's one? plan on wednesday oh oh duh, duh, duh. yeah yeah and, then it, yeah and then he got you know all went down and the injury and the surgery that no other hockey player has had and it was basically just a giant middle finger to buffalo the entire time which is probably a good thing to do they, they <laughs> fair just, yeah, definitely it. fair. Uh, yeah. We the other part of this uh, with the uh, with Stone is that Alec Martinez also gets to come back. Freely. That's correct. 
what's going on with him? Because this feels like the weirdest. Like, this is now, like, hey, the money problems are now solved. But Al, the, it doesn't sound like Alec Martinez is ready to come back yet. No, so what's, that what's was actually my question, which uh, I usually don't get questions, but we're in person, so I did today, which was nice. nice. Uh, so that was my question, was basically like, what about that guy that I've been watching practice for the last month? And the answer was super vague. Uh, so, like, it did – a week ago or so, we had DeBoer, and he kind of mentioned that it might have been kind of COVID-related, and we thought maybe it was, like, long-haul COVID. The word COVID was not used at all from McCrimmon today, so I'm kind of ruling that out now. He said it stemmed from the cut. I don't know if you guys have seen the cut. He took a nasty cut by a skate yeah. across the yeah. face. It was a good – two and a half months ago or so and it was it was bad looking brutal you know so that and they said that they thought it was a concussion for a little while and they weren't sure about that and then he went on this like i don't know three minute long diatribe about how much of a warrior alec martinez was <laughs> and while i agree i'm like you don't i, I know i'm i got it like but <laughs> so we had that okay well, so, I don't know, he's not playing Wednesday. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's important yeah. for you guys, I guess. Not that you need are in need of wins either. I'm super <laughs> curious how this series goes because both of these games are in Vegas and the Abs play the night before. Exactly. Both of Vegas them. plays the night before on the next one, not this one. Yeah, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm on this one. just really curious. The Abs have been nails in the second games of so back to this yeah. year. And I mean, nails is good. They've yeah. been they've been <laughs> they've gone thirty three and three right. in since their first ten games. So is that like, good? Yeah, it's all right. For the record, thirty dash three dash three. Just <laughs> so like they've been good in basically any situation. Uh, but it's like I'm I'm really curious to see that matchup and and obviously like Jack Eichel coming back is like that's the story. But it's yeah. And the mix What's, what these two teams look like because the two teams look so different than the ones that had the postseason matchup yep. against each other. Like yep. they're some of the same guys, but Nazem Kadri didn't play a second of that series, and now he's Why just, was that? Now, now he's <laughs> just apparently uh, now he's just apparently scoring at the same rate as Connor McDavid. So, yeah. but so is Chandler Stevenson. <laughs> yeah. Who needs Jack Eichel when you have right. Chandler Stevenson? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Center, Chandler Stevenson. All now. these shenanigans, and you had Chandler Stevenson the whole time. They were fine. They didn't need centers. <laughs> I, I, I one, one piece that I do think is going to be interesting is like you've got Colorado playing great on the second half of the back to back with travel. Vegas having not played for it'll be six days and traveling back from Canada got their butts kicked in the last game and it was bad. Like they, this is one of the worst losses in like franchise history in this very last game. So you'd imagine they're pretty excited for that. And then you got all new lines. Like they're going to be completely switched up. I don't know that any of the four lines I'm trying to think have ever even played a game together, let alone, well, uh, you know, adding Eichel. Like it's, it's, so it's kind of unique in that regard. I, I wonder like, how much the home game helps there because they can kind of pick where they want to put Eichel and they're kind of going. It's more of like an offensive first line, a defensive first line, and then like a scoring line in between. Um, so that's different from what they've done in the past. And then the fourth line is just, you know, a bunch of guys that if they score, we all get very excited and say how good the depth is. And then when they don't, we say, oh, it doesn't matter. Fourth line is right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just don't hurt you. Look, no, just don't. You, like the fourth line has – it can only – if it scores, amazing. They're the if best. It takes a, if it takes a penalty or it gets scored against, they're all bums and get rid yeah, of Yeah, that them. didn't happen. That That's what we expected coming in. If they draw right. a penalty, though, very good. Very you good. You get an good. offensive zone face off. Penalty, not that important. Hell yeah. yeah. We, uh, my, my girlfriend and I were at the furniture store the other day. We were at American Furniture Warehouse. That's and fun. Yeah. Well, I was laughing because I was telling you as we were walking through, I was like, all of these conversations are so funny when like you walk by other couples other groups other families because everyone's having the same conversation just about their own individual house and it it makes me laugh because hockey's the exact same way because yep. we had the conversation about we were just talking about depth a couple days ago or you know at the end of last week and how well they're not really scoring out but again they're your depth guys or your fourth liners 
But yeah, when you know, a couple nights ago, Abe Kubel scores, we're like, that's the depth. That's it. That's, that's what we're it. talking about. Engrave the names in the cup. We've got it. Abe Kubel <laughs> scored. So yeah, yeah, hockey. But hockey Howden scored uh, four games in a row, and it was like we might as well sign him to Eichel's contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Start start planning the the to shut down the strip again for the parade because it's happening. And then I'm yeah, there. he goes a few games without it, and it's like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Work. I've always wondered, how does that work for, for media? Do we get, are we on one of the buses? Are we like, <laughs> how does that work? Because I, I feel like I was at a parade for a Buccaneers parade and the media was like on a boat. And I'm like, I want to be on a boat, but we don't have water. So I don't know how this works. <laughs> I, is it like the Braves parade where the city didn't want them there? So they were driving 45 miles an hour down the yeah, street? Sure. Well, I just trying to get out of there or I feel like Vegas is better. Like party wise, we should, we should be pretty aware of like, let's do this. When we just shut the strip down to have people shoot pucks at cardboard yeah. cards. I don't know. That was a Joel Pavelski. That was insane. Yeah. Couldn't miss. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Our, do want to ask a couple questions about where Vegas sits, but first we are brought to you by maybe, maybe Mark Stone should come to Colorado and go to light shade and get himself some escape artists. All right. They're the number one awarded to topical for Colorado. They have one to one all the way up to 20 to one, which what Mark Stone might need for his back. We'll see. Very fast acting stuff that you can get in there. Of course, at Light Shade, you can also get whatever THC products you want from top to bottom. You get 25% off when you use code DNVR at checkout. You can check out online at lightshade.com. They have 10 locations in Colorado. It will be 11 starting March 1st. So there should be one near you if you are in the Denver metro area. Be sure to go check them out for all your CBD and THC needs. And then... Crack a beer with Breck Brew. Go get yourself an Avalanche. Been uh, been hyping it up a lot because every time the Avs play, if they score two in the first period, Breck Brew will buy your first Breck Brew on them. Just keep your receipt. Take a picture. Go to breckbrew.com. When the Avs score two, send them that. They'll give you your beer money back. So jump on that with Breck Brew. They're great. Go to the Breck Beer Locator online to find them at a local liquor store near you. would be a great time to sign up for a DNVR Avalanche membership, too, as with the fully getting traded is officially the start of the trade deadline madness. Now it's not just us having a wish list. Things are actually happening. So be sure to get the membership, follow us. You can get shirts that are, I hope as cool as the sin bin shirt from us. Uh, maybe, Great maybe one. not quite, but pretty close. <laughs> so jump on that, but you get a free one when you get an annual membership with us, do all of that. Third period of the DNVR avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings. Ken, I wanted to ask, how comfortable does Vegas feel right now in the West? Because you have Colorado obviously kind of running away with the conference right now. But in the Pacific, Calgary, one point back. We talked about a little bit. They have three games in hand on Vegas. Does Vegas feel good getting Eichel back in that race? Yeah, I don't think they're all that concerned. The rest of the division's pretty much trash sure. i mean at least the bottom of the division is just horrible so like getting in the playoffs is not all that concerning and seemingly with then you don't have a salary cap in the playoffs so the game wholly changes right but honestly like without making the joke i i do think they feel fairly comfortable they're pretty happy with how it's gone despite all the injuries they'll make an excuse every time they lose about why they lost and most of them are legitimate. Some, you know, I got mad about the ice being bad in Florida. Like, nah, Florida's better than you. But, you know, <laughs> I, I think they feel pretty good. I, obviously, it does start to look like collision course with Colorado again. And we start yeah. to talk about, you know, what does that matchup look like? I do think Calgary freaked everyone out a little bit. The Golden Knights have gotten waxed by Calgary like three times in their six trips up there. And they don't really get waxed by many teams that often, but Calgary's never won in Vegas. So it's like, how does that matchup look like? But then that should be a second round. I don't think they're all that concerned. Like I said earlier about the points, we, we, we both teams have enough. <laughs> They'll be fine. Like yeah. if you keep winning, great. If you don't, it's not that big a deal. Figure out the process, make sure things are going the right way and you'll be fine. No, I sucks. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Like it's just such a cakewalk right now that they yeah. I mean, like there's the there's an NHL team legitimately putting its superstar right wing on LTIR and just being like, man, we can we can deal. Yep. <laughs> Season's too long. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, like that's all it is. Uh Ken, where do you see this team right 
now. Obviously, they went on the run last year to the Western Conference Finals, lose in a really weird series. Western uh, Conference Finals. Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Two, a yeah. Lost in the final. The, just lost they in went the, the semifinal. Yeah, they went to the Stanley Cup semifinals. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they lose in a really weird series. Um, they haven't been quite as dominant this year, even with the weaker division. Now, obviously, there's a thousand caveats to that with injuries yeah. and COVID. Constant and stuff. injuries. Yeah. Right. But just with Eichel coming in, because I think a lot of people have forgotten just how good Jack Eichel is. Where do you see this team at right now relative to where they were last year? Um, They're a little bit more of an unknown than I think they were last year. I think going into last year, it was like, well, they're definitely the best team not named Colorado in the West. And then we'll see right. once we get to that point. And we got mm -hmm. there and that series was interesting. And I think we're kind of in a similar spot. Uh, they're both pretty well better than everybody else. There's, I think there's a little bit more of contenders this year. Like last year, that division that these two teams played in was embarrassing. Yeah, it was like, awful. Yeah. It was yeah. a joke. Two really good it was teams, them. a respectable yeah. Minnesota team. And then and even both. Minnesota was, they were a fraud. Like, and they proved it in that game seven. Like they couldn't even skate. Go watch that game sometime. It's unbelievable how many guys just tripped over being in game seven. It was, it was, <laughs> but like, I think you, you the 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 confusing part is like there was such a good feel about what happened after that Colorado series. Like, whoa, I think we actually might be a good matchup against this team, and this could be a problem for them. And no matter how good they look, that could end up being a problem. But now when you put Jack Eichel in the mix and you kind of start to shift things around, and then you wonder what is the Mark Stone you're gonna get. Can they just go from being injured for four months to suddenly not being injured for two months at the exact perfect time? It seems unrealistic. There's a there's so many unknowns about how the chemistry is going to work, what they're going to have to do if Stone is healthy. I just don't know that we have a great sense of what they're going to be. I think it's clear they're the best team in the Pacific. In the Pacific. Calgary's a fun team. They're good. They're dangerous. But I like talent-wise, they're just not there. And then, you know, the Central, there's some decent teams, but I still think Vegas is right there with Colorado is probably the best two teams in, in the conference. And then the other conferences, uh, that, that's hefty. The East gets fun. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the East is, is gonna have to worry so about. top heavy. Yeah. Yeah. But then, there's, that, there's that, fortunately, that's what we have to worry about is the top. Yeah. We have to worry about well, the shit at the bottom. They, they're all going to beat the shit out of each other. Only one of those teams can survive. So I'm yeah, not that worried about one, the East. Like, which, whatever happens out there happens. Yeah. And you just got to, I mean, take care of your own house at that at that point. And that's whichever one survives, right? At least. Colorado, Colorado and Vegas are like, we might have to play each other. And then an East team. Uh, the Eastern teams are like, yeah, you know, might have to go through all of these. <laughs> yeah, right. And then Vegas or Colorado. Right. I'm just glad that they are in separate divisions so that if they meet this year, it should be Colorado. assuming nothing crazy happens should be the conference finals. Cause that yeah. God, the NHL has pissed me off so many times over the last few years, you end up with the best matchup of the postseason in the second round. Yeah. We had it last well, like yep. last, right. and, and this year you're going to end up, you look at the Atlantic division and you're like, Oh, so Tampa Bay and Florida is going to be in the first round again, or Tampa Bay and Toronto or Florida and Toronto or whatever, whatever combination comes out is going to be an unbelievable series. And one of the seven best teams is losing in the first round. Can we just fast? And then, that? Yeah, right. Just get and there. then whoever does come out of that one will likely end up playing the one Atlantic team that didn't have to play each other. So you're going to have, Two of the three best teams out of the East eliminated by the second round, gay run teed. Yep. It's just such a it's good for ugh, us. I hate this. Yeah, yeah. Great for us. I just I hate the format. Like all those years that we had to watch Crosby and Ovi play in the second round. Yeah. Sucked. Yep. And it was it was because that defined Ovi's career. Because it was like be Crosby. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, the abs, the abs can't time. get out of the second <laughs> round. And so that now one time that Ovi figured it out. Don't remind me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna feel bad for an expansion franchise losing in the Cup Finals. You can just fuck off with that. Come on, but, no. then, but, but, but then the bullshit happened the next year. Not a major. See this? Oh yeah, and that happened. <laughs> yes, I, me, I, 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 feel, I feel like most let me, people let me feel for sympathy me. for three Come Conference on, Finals. We've had a rough go. Four years. It's been a rough go. Come yeah. on, <laughs> life is hard. It's ridiculous.
<laughs> I I was laughing because uh, I was at the All Star game uh, a couple weeks ago, and the booze for Tom Wilson. At first, I was like, "Man, they really don't like this <laughs> Eastern Conference." I know he's kind of the villain, and then it clicked to me. I was like, "Oh, yeah." yeah. There was this whole thing with Reeves, and and you know, yeah, and they, yeah. they knocked him out, and then Reeves signed pictures that he wasn't supposed to sign, and somehow it was my picture, so then I got in trouble. It was a whole thing. It was fun. Damn. Yeah, right. Shout out to anyone <laughs> for them getting rid of uh, Ryan Reeves. It has made my life so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't boo Pavelski that much. I guess Pavelski didn't do anything. He just got hurt. But there are some, believe it or not, <laughs> there are some, and these are these are the ones that I try to mute on Twitter quickly, but that believe that the blood was fake and that Pavelski. <laughs> Come on. So, yeah. <laughs> Puts a blood capsule in his helmet. Yeah, that's what they believe. That, uh, Knows he's going to get three, rocked in the face somehow. Get, take one to the chin. Yeah, it was. Uh, so, yeah. So, those people exist. So, think about that when you're driving. Great. Don't get me wrong. That that was that was maybe one of the worst penalty calls I've ever seen in my life when you get to watch it on replay. But, yeah. Fake fake blood in the helmet. That's yeah, That's good. a... That's a new one, but yeah, that that is the one where I will give the sympathy to Vegas and their fans. That was absolutely Thank brutal. Thank you. We <laughs> need that for, for me and, too, as I was booking my trip to Vegas. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The I was gonna say, and it deprived us of Golden Knights Avs yep. at the time. I know. I was looking into flights to Denver. We had to I go because I think we were there for Game One and Two, if I'm not mistaken. I'm. I mentioned it. Yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned it sometime over the summer, but we were this close to Avs Vegas three years in a row. I know. Mm-hmm. With with Dallas game seven, yep. uh, and then... Who was that knucklehead that's Kiwi Ranta? Was that it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's... Oh, Barclay I had actually forgotten that. Name for the, for that. Yeah. When you say that name, you get dangerously close to getting thrown off the show. Yeah. So. <laughs> Bar- Barkley Good draws that one for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well... I don't know. Maybe the Avs will have to go get Joe Pavelski just for I mean, the Reeves Vegas like a fake blood. player. <laughs> Can you get like Joe Pavelski retained salary and fake blood package? Yeah. Like, Make sure. <laughs> fake blood's got to be part of the <laughs> like sure. second and third. You got to throw in an extra six. They're a trade swap. Pick swap for the blood packets. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I do got to ask, and I want to ask this Vegas at full strength. Colorado at full strength with cap or without cap cheating with, the cap, without cap playoff style. Okay. Yeah. So stone conference finals. Yep. Yeah. Ev- okay. Everyone's in okay. who's better. I think it's Vegas. Okay. Uh, and the, re- the reason I say that is because they beat them last year and yes, the teams are different. I understand that, but I felt like as that series went on, Vegas continuously presented the same problems and the abs did not have answers to those problems as it's gone on. They played again in this regular season. I thought they sent the same problems at them. I thought they still didn't have the answers. And I think that, you know, Kadri being Kadri is certainly good and helps a lot, but I don't think he can offset Eichel. And so I think that with the way the matchup is, the one place that, is a huge difference is in the goal. I think the Golden Knights got worse. I think that the Avs got better. So that could make a difference because I thought Grubauer was bad in that series. And and without it, you know, if maybe he doesn't have a puck go off his asshole and into the goal, <laughs> then maybe the series is different. I don't know. But full strength, again, though, like, I just don't know how Eichel's going to look. I don't know how Eichel's going to fit. I don't know if he's going to defend. They don't defend anymore. That, that's been a huge sticking point for me with the Golden Knights this year. Is they just do not defend anymore. And now all of a sudden, your number one center, which was your best defensive center in Carlson, now I don't think Eichel's going to defend all that much. So maybe right. they're not the same team. Like they're heading more towards trying to beat you four to three instead of two to one. And that doesn't work against Colorado. So it's tough. Yeah, no, I definitely think it's an interesting question. And and <clears throat> I, I think the fun part is what you look forward to in a matchup is I think whoever you give the edge to, it's right there. I agree with you in the sense of I, I'm a firm believer in they played last year in the playoffs. Right now, Vegas is the better team until the abs prove that they aren't. Um, where I would maybe 
make the argue for disagreeing is Kale McCarr. You essentially have Nathan McKinnon, but on defense. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Miko Rantanen. Uh, and then if Kadri keeps going with what, what he's doing with the way the abs have looked this year, I, I could talk myself into giving them the edge, but I agree with you. I think until you prove in the playoffs, Vegas is the better team until the abs literally steal that title. What is different this year in McCarr's game that we didn't see in the playoffs last year? Everything that he does is better. <laughs> Because, like, I felt That's like... That's not a sarcastic answer. No, 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 everything that he's done is better. I just felt like he wasn't on the puck all that often in that series, and I think that was purposeful from the Golden Knights, and I felt the same way when they played earlier. I think he had an awesome goal, but I feel like they have the ability to kind of choose who can not have the puck, and if McCarr doesn't have the puck, I don't know how much that improvement's actually going to help. That's the, that's the one kind of pushback I'll give you on that. Because he was not, he was not like transcendent in that series. My, I mean, I think yeah. the solution there is if McCarr doesn't have the puck, the Avs need McKinnon and Rantanen to not disappear for three games of the series. Yep. I would also say I'm throwing the game that they played earlier this year into the bin. That's fine. That's fair. Because the Avs didn't have Devon Taves or Sam Gerrard. That's fair. Darcy Kemper hadn't been any good yet, and amongst guys who did play in that game, you have. Jason Megna, Martin Kaut, and Sampo Ranta, all guys who are now Colorado Eagles. Superstars. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sampo Ranta played and, like the entire series last year. It yeah, was the, terrible. The, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the complexion of Colorado's roster today, just from that matchup alone. So, what are you expecting better. on Wednesday? But not to jump ahead, you guys play another game. We're allowed to jump ahead, players. Aren't I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have any idea. Uh, the the Avs. The, what's been most impressive about the Avs this year is that any of the games in which they could have made an excuse, they they didn't. They went out and they either won those games or it was uh, the Nashville game where they had fifteen and a half players, and uh, the COVID thing had started and. Jordan Gross took 7,000 penalties in that game, and it was just the weirdest, like, it was just, like, the weirdest night to watch it what supposedly was an NHL game. Um, the, th- the point being that the Avs have been, they've just been good in every situation that they've walked into. On the road, at home, back-to-backs, you know, coming off of you know, what you think are trap games or letdown games, none of it has mattered. They've just taken the task that's in front of them and handled it. They've played lots of games that they have that have not been in what you would think of as the ab style, and they win those games. They've they've played to their competition a little bit in that they do just enough to beat the bad teams, but against the other good teams, it's almost like they've taken it personally. And they get they've gotten down a couple of those games, and they've also gotten up in some of those games. It hasn't mattered. They've won those games. It the, hasn't mattered. It doesn't matter. Trailing, leading, they just keep beating just about everybody. The the one the thing that I'm really looking forward to, obviously, anytime these two teams play, it's usually a pretty fun game. Um, but especially a series because Ken, I think you're 100 percent right, and I think it's actually a wall the Avs ran into two years in a row in the playoffs where they struggled to adapt quick enough to get themselves either back into a series or keep a series close or like last year to keep it from slipping away. That's something they've talked a lot about this year, especially Jared Bednar of we have to be better about adapting on the fly and just watching them do it within the course of a game games that even literally as recently as last year, you probably would have seen them kind of like, okay, well let's pack this one in and try to adjust for the next game. You know, Toronto and Boston are two games that Jared Bednar highlighted from the the start of this calendar year, 2022, that he thinks are kind of like defining games for them this season where they were getting their teeth kicked in pretty good. A lot of like what you were saying, they, they I mean, they were just stuffing them at their own blue line, mm-hmm. weren't allowing for any of that free flowing creativity, uh, cutting Kale McCarr off at the wall, stuff like that. And they went into that intermission. And when they came out, it looked like a... It's looked like a different team. 
So I'm so anxious. I really hope they get a chance to play Vegas because I think you're 100% right. That is something that Vegas has done to them over the last couple of years, kind of coming to a head in that in that series. I would be really anxious to watch it because this abs group seems like they have an ability to play a different style more so than we've seen them in, in the past. So I think it'll be really interesting, but I, I think you're right with that, that they've struggled and, and I'm with you until the abs prove that they are the better team, which they very well could, they could end up doing that. But until they do, um, you have to go with kind of the, the defending champ, if you will. Yeah, don't say little... that. They didn't, they didn't champion <laughs> anything. Defending they head to head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but but you know what I'm getting at there. You yeah, know, yeah. B- between these two teams, the one who came out, that's a better team in, in, until it's said otherwise. And, and and we trust that Jared Bednar has the ability to make these adjustments in a series because it was nowhere to be found in that one. And like I are, are we remember getting what later. happened in game five. Are we forgetting that the Avs kicked the holy shit out of Vegas? Were it not until they blew it? Hour? Like – and but, then what happened in game six? Yeah, I mean, game six, again, Phil, the Avs lead that game, and Philip Grubauer and game can't two, track a Golden puck Knights out of the-, the shit out of the Avs and lost. Yeah, and, like, that's what I'm saying, though. And nobody's talking about the, any, like, failure to adjust in that. Like, the Avs clearly adjusted in that series. I don't think I agree. Do we not remember what happened in game five? That game was one-sided. The only yeah, difference but- is, is that Marc-Andre Fleury is better than Philip Grubauer. And that, and that, I'll that's, the, that. that's the that's the game that the goalie stole that changed the series, and it was at that point game six like went back to exactly the same problem. Yeah, it, 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 did, it really two, didn't game though. Three and game four, like it just there's too it was too like, much. Of it. They Phil just Grubauer was awful against. in in game six, and he was just not quite good enough in game five. I don't this, disagree it, with that. Whatever the, the what what happened, how the game ended in game six didn't matter. Because Grubauer had already yeah. essentially sunk that ship. Yeah. All the good work that they had done, and he's just giving away free shit. Yeah. But well, like game like game five, go back and like look rewatch that game sometime. Like re re let's, like relive that thing because <laughs> I the Avs think I'm going to tonight. I'm like, interested now. The the Avs like the Avs here, had here. their way in that game. It was Two good like, goofy turnovers where Alex Tuck bug bats a puck out of the air past Grubauer. Early third period, and then it's right. and then it's Ryan Graves gives Mark Stone a fucking breakaway in overtime. Yeah, that was bad. Like <laughs> the, it, it betrays all of what happened in that game. Like the Avs lost, and Flurry is the biggest. I'm, I will forever die on the hill that it was Flurry out playing Grubauer in that game. Because I have I'm no okay. idea what happens in the series if the Avs win game five like they should have. I don't know what happens. The, rest the thing of the is, like, I, I think the biggest adjustment in that series was the games where McKinnon and Miko showed up and the games where they didn't. It, it's not like a big coaching change. It's just for games three and four, Mac and Miko were fucking around. <laughs> I, I'm with you, but I also think there's something to be said about how the Golden Knights went about making that happen. I, I, and I, I think that was that was their plan all the way was to play a frustrating style. And when Colorado got frustrated, it fell apart. Time after yeah. time after time. And like that's the part that I just thought they had to find a way to get the puck in behind them and skate around them instead of skating through them. And they just didn't do it consistently enough. Now you got me rethinking game five. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna go watch it tonight. I, I remember so I remember being in the building for game five and, and you'll part remember of the reason, it differently. Well, so he, here's where I, I think I agree with Ken because like you're right like there's no bones about it like the abs were the better team in game five it never felt like that like you could feel the tension in the building for game five and it wasn't like nervous excitement tension it it felt like the abs were chasing a series they were tied in and I think frustrated is a great word and again I go back to the Dallas series in the bubble they had a thousand excuses. They pushed that to seven games, but again, it just felt like they're chasing and it felt like it would have been a relief for them to pull off a win in either of those last two Dallas two years ago than Vegas last year. It's not that they didn't play well. It's not that there wasn't, you know, again, Grubauer makes a save and maybe they go on to win and, and I'm never having these thoughts, but I just felt like after game four, they were chasing that entire series. The series was tied, but it felt lost. 
And, and that was that to me kind of translated to how they played. I thought they played frustrated. Um, even if they controlled pace of play in many of those games, I, I just, I never felt like they were going to win that series. And game six, I was in the building in game six and it was kind of a seesaw game. Like Colorado mm-hmm. kept coming back and tying it over and over and over again. And I felt like the whole time the building was like, okay, that's fun. You're about yeah. to lose. Like I, I feel like the building was there. Like yeah. we've got this, we got them. This is crazy yeah. that we're actually going to do this. And, and that's a feel that the Golden Knights don't have a lot. They're not the underdog very often. And feeling that way, even when you're up 3-2 in a series, I thought they they controlled most of that series after that wacky first game that they played like garbage. And the second game, that's the one that I think Colorado, I think my Colorado might have been better off losing it, kind of fooled themselves mm. into thinking that they were okay. And they weren't. They were not playing a style in game two that was going to work, and it didn't. And, and that to me is, is one of the biggest differences. And now, obviously if you get into a second round series and, and you know, you get kind of punched in the mouth for two games, you'll see, but there is something right now, Ken, about the way the abs show up to the rink right now, even in that, that game against Toronto, they're down three to nothing. Austin Matthews is just going off every time it touches the ice. They just looked like they were going to win. They just have that feel right now where when they show up, they're like, yep, the game might kind of go back and forth, but at the end of the day, we feel like we're going to, come out on top. And that was what I think was missing from that series against Vegas. Vegas felt like they had that one in the bag, maybe even after game two. And, and the abs felt like they were just trying to hold it off for, for four more games. And this year's Vegas team doesn't have any good vibes or anything going for it. It's all, wow, this is cool that we are stealing points when we're this banged up. And now as they get healthier, you're still seeing like they still go up to Calgary pretty healthy and get smoked. They beat Edmonton four to nothing, and I sat there and said they played the crap in the game. Everyone hates <laughs> me for it, whatever. But you know, this is not a team that's coming in with like elite confidence. But by the time they see see Colorado, it'll be a different story. You know, I, I don't think you really have to worry about that at that point. And again, it's forty something games into an eighty two game regular right. season. They're fine. Like they'll be fine. But they're not. They don't have that like, oh, it's 2 nothing in the second period. They're definitely going to win. We all think, oh, it's possible. They're better than this right. team. But it's not, this is going to happen, which is right. what they had for a lot of the last three, four seasons. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. It, it's it's going to be really interesting because it's, it's funny how different teams can look one year removed. And with one player, basically. I mean, yep. for Vegas, it's such a massive change, just the one player. And what's he going to look like? What What does he look like in a playoff game? What does he look like when he has to defend? What does he look like when he may not even be the best player on the ice in an mm-hmm. individual, on his own team? Like, there's a lot of questions with him that is, is tricky. And, and, and then there's also an argument that I keep making is like, are we underrating how damn good Jack Eichel is? Like, this dude was top three, top four in the league forever. And then we were like, nah, I don't want to watch Buffalo anymore. And we forgot. Yeah. And that's fine. And he's hurt for 11 months. Like I get it, but I don't know. It's, it's confusing. And, and, and let's relax about Wednesday's game. Like whoever wins Wednesday's game, it has nothing yeah. to do with who's going to win a playoff series. Yeah. The loser I mean, of that game writes it off immediately. Yeah, like, <laughs> immediately. Like you win that game and you're like, okay, you got two points. It's not beat Vegas. I don't even think it's, you you nobody needs those. <laughs> yeah, right. Neither team needs those. Like, cool. I mean, I think, I, I think Vegas is going to need them more than Colorado will, but Colorado wants – Colorado wants to get to clinch city and start resting guys. Yeah. Vegas will like, be fine. Like look at the rest of the division. They, no. They'd have to fall below the Kings and the ducks and uh, uh, Edmonton's a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's just no way. Pretender, and that's if sure. Calgary keeps playing great, which they probably won't because they're Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a hard time being sold on any of those other Pacific division they're teams. Bad. They're just not good. The ducks are going to be good in a few years. The Kings are weird. I don't even know what to make of them. Some days you're like, damn, this team's really good. And then other days you're like, these guys are old. They're the only team to thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly outplay Colorado in the last couple of months. And they lost. That game. <laughs> yeah, they have the capability of doing it. They have really good players. They have shut down centers, which two of them, you have two shut down centers. You can make anybody look bad in a given day, but over the course of a series, there's just no way. They don't, yeah. they, they don't, they don't defend either. 
they don't feel like they have the goaltending right like that too how can how long can jonathan quick keep the clock turned back <laughs> right so that that's going to be the last question i've got for you ken where are you at with robin leonard like let's just one. <laughs> it might be more complicated than LTIR. Before, um, but take the injury out of it. Let's say he's not injured right now. How? Yeah. How? What is kind of the feel? Of, you know, you said the fans aren't really happy with him. What is your kind of feel of of Leonard right now? Pushing the fans to the side. The fans hate him. They'll always hate him, except for the fans that love him because the other fans hate him. And right. so then they have to be more in love with him because everyone. Never mind. Okay, so, this sounds. Oh, sure. we know. We know it's this conversation. Fun. Yeah. Oh, it is fun. <laughs> it's great, like whatever. He 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 can be better, and he needs to be better mm. than what he has been to this point. Mm. Yeah. There is certainly a number of question marks on like, well, he's the starter for the first time in a long time. And now this is the third time he's getting injured. He hasn't really performed at the same level. He hasn't been a starter since like the Buffalo days. It's, it's been a while and he hasn't quite lived up to it, but there's also an argument to be said that they don't defend. I've said it about a hundred times, <laughs> they do not defend this year. They love giving up high danger chances. They gave up 11 high danger chances in the first period to Edmonton and did not give up a goal. They won the period <laughs> to nothing. And everyone's like, the Golden Knights are awesome. Whatever. <laughs> they need, like, his goal saved above expected is very good. Eye test tells you there's one a night where it's not very good. If you right. move the puck side to side on him, he's giant. It doesn't really go that well. So, like, there are holes in what he does. There are issues in what he does. But at the same time, he went on a playoff run in the bubble where he had, like, six shutouts in a playoff run. It was amazing. Right. And the guy can be that good. He's very good, but he just hasn't been. And then on top of all of it is the intangible of he's not – Mark Andre Fleury in any fashion, and Mark Andre right. Fleury was a special human being that could pull guys out of not playing well and could give guys wet willies in the middle of the Western Conference Finals and make you laugh <laughs> and forget how important the game is. And yeah. and it happened. Like he's not that. I think there's a different demeanor in the locker room because of that. And I think you very well may see it that if Fleury steals a game. It put you in a position where you felt like there's no way they're ever going to beat us. If Leonard steals a game, you're like, well, that's what he's supposed to do. It's just not the same feeling. And so that's the part that we will probably not have an answer till until game seven, when uh, I guess it will be in Colorado, right? So I'll see you guys in game seven in the Western Conference <laughs> Finals. And I'll give you an answer to that. Perfect. I look forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. We do have one more question for you. Not hockey related. Everyone who comes on the show has to give us their bad food take. Uh, I keep first, seeing that. Well, explain. Give, so, what do you mean? I don't like barbecue. Uh, okay, you're wrong. Yeah. That's yeah. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. There's what we asked someone the other day. They like ketchup on mashed potatoes. Yeah. We had yeah. one person tell us that he puts ranch dressing and olives in his oatmeal. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I have like a I am anti-condiment like across the board like I do not like any condiments ketchup mustard really? relish any condiments like it, so you just go like dry on fries and stuff I use like dry rub so this all right maybe this is not a bad take I think this is a smart take I actually in my <laughs> car always have a little bottle of blackened seasoning that I put on like fries or chicken tenders or whatever uh, Paul's okay. food magic is what it's called. It's delicious. Uh, I've used it before. Actually. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, yeah, I, I think that would probably be, I don't know. I, I don't really, I just eat bullshit most of the time, like frozen pizza and fried How rice. do you eat a hot dog? Not plain? Well, grilled onions, yeah, if, if possible. But I would eat it plain. I like AJ to wiggle I... it first and then like... <laughs> <laughs> AJ, AJ and I are Don't team. That seriously, <laughs> <laughs> clip that. <laughs> AJ, AJ and I are team plain hot dogs, so That's we're with you. Hot. We 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 were getting we were getting yeah, shit the other day. But awful awful take. What condiment? Again, like why? What 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 is a good condiment? Like ketchup is bullshit. Yeah, ketchup. Is 
ketchup is See, disgusting. mustard good common condiment. no yes the yellow kind or like the brown yeah, yellow kind. yellow They're mustard. both gross but the mustard brown kind is like all bumpy and see yeah no, that one's the brown terrible. kind is bad agreed oh the yellow <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> yeah mustard sucks i like ketchup on certain things uh see i'm not like a universal condiment person like i don't have any one thing that i put on everything but like Everything's got its own little sauce, you know. Like relish, you're, you're a rel- you like. Relish. Oh, I'm not a relish guy. No, no relish no, is no, gross. No, no. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. what other condiments do people use? Man, oh, like, uh, puts burritos. Like, <laughs> condiments, that's disgusting. Kim, Rudo is- puts mayo in burritos. Oh, mayo's awful. Oh, I get eggs that's in general. Take. Mayo is eggs in general are not good for me. I, I <laughs> prefer the chicken to have hatched and grown. I don't like chicken fetus. It's not for me. <laughs> chicken fetus i don't they, okay here's one i thought of i love brunch that. ruins everything if if someone tells you to go to brunch say no we're going to breakfast or lunch because brunch will inevitably ruin dinner see I, that you're gonna be a hard sell on that yeah, one i feel like uh, that big might be brunch the guy take. i feel like big brunch bad. guy here brunch talking, to, talking to three dudes that wake up at 11 o'clock in the yeah. morning that's we only lunch, do brunch <laughs> That's we were lunch. Literally jamming mimosas yesterday. Yeah, so <laughs> I got bombed on the show just on mimosas yesterday. <laughs> Relish, gross. Sour, sauerkraut, gross. Cottage cheese, gross. Yeah. Yep. I'm in on all, all that. Terrible. Boo. Yeah. I <laughs> like it. I, I like it that dog. Ken was just like a machine gun of bad food takes, though. <laughs> You're welcome. Because we asked some people, like, what's your bad food take? And, and we like, got, ah, we, got nothing. We <laughs> whipped cream on a bagel. Which, <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty that bad. Weird, I mean, but, probably fine. Yeah, I mean, it was it was like okay, cool. So like toasted though, like whipped cream. Whipped cream yeah, when it gets toasted. hot. No, no, whipped cream when it gets hot gets kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, melted whipped cream on a bagel. Yeah. Salsa, I Pass. can't. I can't detest the salsa. I've never had it. Yeah, salsa, it just refuses man. to dry salsa. Not my favorite. The fact that you haven't had it is that's almost like. Yeah, what almost is that? not believable. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, who, what what kind of person are you? But like, what what do you mean you've never had it? Like, have you been to a Mexican restaurant? Yeah, and so like they bring it out, and you're just like never even thought. Let me let me dip a toe in this. Yeah, never, oh, never man, thought about is, it. That's I mean, why, mostly because the ingredients in it are disgusting. I don't like right, tomatoes much, so. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I mean, you still have never try tried it. It's just the one. consistency of it looks disgusting, and I'm yeah, a that texture is, eater, yeah. and, and it's got stuff in it that I don't like. And I'm just like, what's the upside here? It's delicious. The world likes it, and it's like maybe I could <laughs> possibly be wrong on this. You're probably not, but I mean, if there's a chance a that I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just not interested in finding out because if I'm not, then I just wasted that time. Hell and I sleep just fine, there, having never, <laughs> having never put that in my mouth. I sleep just fine. The the real way to AJ's heart, Ken. Pickles or not pickles? No, absolutely not. Pickles okay. are disgusting. Pickles right, are disgusting for that one. You're all wrong yeah. again on this. Basically, pickling great. anything is disgusting. Pickled onions, no. Pickled jalapenos, no. Don't pickle shit. <laughs> I uh, I used to work with this uh, young lady who yeah. she would keep a jar of pickles in like the work freeze or fridge. And when she was done, she'd just sit in the break room drinking the juice, and it okay. made no, me want to That's bomb. disgusting. No, 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 that's no, no, disgusting. No, no, no. Bomb it. I got to go. This is getting gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> all right. Well, before we all go bomb it, Ken, if you want to tell all of these people where we can find all of your awesome stuff. Uh, there. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, the site's sinbin.vegas. Sinbin.vegas on Twitter. Um. Cheese yeah, that's yogurt. That, there's that, some you, fucking monsters out. out there. Yeah, you'll figure it out. <laughs> there you go. Go find Sinbin Vegas. Go buy this shirt if you lose a bet about the playoffs. Uh, you'll see go it again. Large. We ran out. You got the last one. Oh, thank God. Got yeah, in just in time. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll see this shirt again on Wednesday. We're doing a watch along of the Vegas game. Uh, Ken's too cool for us. He gets to actually be in the arena and, and cover oh, the well, game. I'm going to so. try and dip in. <laughs> You're more than welcome if you want to if you want to drop in. We'd love to have you. So, uh, either way, we appreciate all y'all listen to us. We will be back tomorrow, pregame, postgame against Dallas. All that good stuff. Hope to see you there. Until then, we will talk to all of you beautiful people on the next one.